Call it a hot take if you will, but I think we should be spending more money in our 20s, not putting everything away. And so in this episode, I'm going to dive into three reasons why I'm spending more money in my 20s. I'm not saying I'm not saving because I am, but I'm spending or investing more into myself in my 20s than I am just you know, putting all my money away and living the rice and beans diet, because I don't think that, you know, I don't think that's the right thing that we should be doing, especially if we're trying to achieve the personal growth that we want, achieve the health and fitness goals that we want, achieve the relationship goals that we want, achieve the financial goals that we want, achieve the spiritual goals that we want. Like, I just don't think that having this scarcity mindset or mentality is the best thing that we can do. I truly think that our 20s are for learning and our 30s are for earning. I did not come up with that. So please do not <laughs> please do not give me credit for that. I heard it somewhere and I think it's really true because our 20s are such foundational years of our lives and then once we hit our 30s, that's when we, you know, a lot of us start to get serious with uh, relationships, having a significant other getting married, having kids, getting into more higher level roles and jobs or whatever else it may be. Whereas our 20s are for learning, for making mistakes, for messing up, for taking risks. And that's exciting. It's definitely scary, but it's exciting. So three reasons why I'm spending more money in my 20s. Number one, learn so that you can earn. I just mentioned it, our 20s are for learning, 30s are for earning. Society has force-fed us this notion that we should be investing all of our monies, all of our money in our 20s. And I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing, but I think the more money you pour back into yourself, the more you're able to earn as you continue to grow, right? So what does that look like? For example, I have invested... <laughs> a lot of money into mentorship over the past three years. I think a lot of you guys have heard me talk about this before, but uh, having a mentor has been one of the best investments that I've made. My mentor, Chase Tuning, who is an absolute legend, go check out his podcast, Ever Forward Radio. He is just an incredible dude. I was drawn to his podcast. I came across his stuff back in 2020 when I first started creating content, when I first started my podcast. And he was the guy who had been doing it since 2017. And I was like, I want to podcast for the rest of my life. Like I want to figure out how this guy turned that into a career. He was an army veteran and he was working, I believe he was doing like health coaching stuff, but you know, he got his, uh, he got a master's degree and like health sciences and all the things. And ultimately he found podcasting to be the most fulfilling thing and was able to turn that into a business. And something about his content just really stuck with me. So when we got on the phone for the first time, I was two months out of college and I had like no money. I really, I didn't have a quote unquote real job. I was starting my personal training and nutrition coaching company and I was making very little money. Luckily I was living at home so I didn't have many expenses, but at that time I was still like any money that I was getting, I was spending on taking courses or reading books or, you know, meeting up with people, masterminds, things like that, because I knew that that money, while it hurt to spend, was going to pay off in the long run. So I have been working for, or with, with Chase for, this is Three, year three now. Yeah. So 22, 2023, and 2024. Wow. Yeah. Three years. Crazy. Uh, I had graduated in the fall of 2021. So we're coming up on three years. No. Yeah. Fall of 2021. I don't even know. And then I actually like walked in graduation in the spring of 2022. So coming up on two years since graduating college. Mentors, courses, masterminds, summits, books, whatever else it is, learn like it's your freaking job. And I'm an advocate for learn and then apply, 
right? Because any of us can go read the book, listen to the podcast, watch the YouTube video, listen to the speaker, whatever else it is. But if we have that knowledge and we're not actually applying it and taking action, then it doesn't mean anything. So learning with the intention of putting what you learn into action, because you can read all the self-development books. Like I've been there. I was, I went down the self-development rabbit hole, the personal growth books. I was listening to the, you know, Jay Shetty's of the world, the Gary V's and, um, you know, the Andy Frisella's and I was reading all the books and doing everything. And again, it's at a certain point, all of those personal growth books just become repetitive if you're not taking action. Yeah. There's great nuggets and bits and pieces that you can take out of them. But if you're not like, how can I take this concept and apply it to my life. So Jesse Itzler, who is a man who I look up to very much. I actually had the chance to meet him at Running Man last year. Awesome, awesome dude. Somebody who I've been consuming his content for a long time. I saw one of his Instagram posts and he was like, I'm striving to retain more information from the books that I read. So what did he do? He takes a note card and as he goes through a book, he highlights the concept that like, sticks out to him, highlights it, and then at the end of the chapter goes back and quickly summarizes what he highlighted and how he can apply that to his life. And I was like, man, that is freaking genius. So I have actually taken that and applied that. And it forces you to read with more intention and take the concept that you're reading and not just be like, oh yeah, that's awesome. But how do I then apply it to my life? So learning, applying that, and then trusting that that's going to help you earn more in your 30s. So there's no direct correlation between investing in yourself versus investing in like the S&P 500 where it's like, oh, you invest X amount of money a month over a certain period of time. You can kind of predict the rates that you're going to get back or, you know, how much your fund's going to grow and, you know, increase in percentage and all that thing and all that stuff. You know, you invest couple hundred dollars, a couple thousand dollars into a mentor, into a coach, into a course, certification, events, like there's no direct correlation. Like, hey, you come to this seminar, you come to this summit and you're going to make X amount of money within X amount of time. I mean, there are some people who can, who guarantee that or, you know, they have the framework for that. But most of the time I have just been learn you know, invest and just trust that once you invest it, it's going to be poured back into you. And I'm not just talking to people in their twenties here. Like if at any point in your life, there should be a period of like learning and developing that lifelong learner mentality. I was listening to a podcast with the legend, Tim Ferriss, and he was saying he has a, a blue belt, a lifelong blue belt mentality where in, um, I don't know, martial arts, that's not really my it's not really my forte. It's not my cup of tea. I don't know how like high or low the blue belt is, but uh, just having that blue belt mentality for the rest of your life and just adopting that mindset of being a lifelong learner because when you stop learning, that's when you start losing. So guys, you just have to follow your heart. Like remember that there, there's no failing, truly. There's just opportunities to learn. Yeah, I mean, yes, there is failing. Like, trust me, I failed a lot. <laughs> but every time I do that, it's an opportunity to reflect and take a lesson from that and then go and apply that so that you're able to apply that and have it there be a direct correlation to the growth of where you go from there. So you fail, you learn, you go back to the drawing board, you reapply in a different way. You might fail again, but then <laughs> you just repeat the cycle and ultimately you're going to find success. I promise you. So Number one, learn so that you can earn. Very important. The second reason that I am investing more money, I'm sorry, the second reason that I am spending more money in my 20s, got me on the investing, got my mind going on to investing right now. The second reason that I am spending more money in my 20s is to build a strong foundation, Right? Like I mentioned the rice and bean diet early in this podcast. And I think that's just a great analogy because hustle culture, right? Like the, I love Gary Vee. He's one of my guys. Like he, to this day, he's one of the main reasons that I decided to create content. But he talks about like, okay, yeah, 
that 99 cent slice in New York pizza life, you know, three dot spend three dollars a day, you know, or six dollars a day, whatever else it is. Um, rice and bean diet, like I just don't believe in that because energy is currency. And if you are putting crap in your body or you're putting low quality food in your body, you're not eating enough, um, you're not giving it the nutrients that it needs. How do you expect to have the mental capacity, the energy, the stamina, the creativity to go out and do what you need to do? Like in my life, the times where I have not been dialed in on my diet, where I'm not just taking care of myself from like a mental, physical, and spiritual standpoint, like I don't have the energy to do what I need to do. I don't have the energy to, you know, show up my best on calls or podcasts or have the creative juice to just drop into flow and come up with new concept and ideas that are going to help make the world a better place. So I am an advocate for investing in healthy foods, gym memberships, races, um, events, seminars, courses, classes, like whatever else it may be that fills your cup up and gives you the energy to learn, apply, fail, create, just level up in life, that's what you need to be doing. Investing in building a strong foundation because, oh man, I, I just get so passionate about this because I see so many people, especially in their 20s, but even just beyond, who fall into this cycle of like a, a nice paycheck early in their 20s and there's like this route, this ladder to climb the, you know, the corporate ladder and, and do it, do whatever you need to do, but to get to the next level. But it's like, are you really being challenged to learn, to grow, to explore, to be curious? Like there is a freaking huge world out there. I saw a crazy stat. I don't remember the exact number, but it's like the amount of people who never leave their hometown is staggering and the amount of people who never move like 50 miles from their hometown is nuts and there is just a massive massive world out there i was in tanzania and staying at this hostel and there was a bunch of danish people there and i was talking to them and they go to high school until they're like 19 and then they go and take a year of volunteering or working or just doing different things traveling going to different countries before they end up going to college because they get real world experiences. They're learning so that they actually have a better understanding of what they want to do so that when they go to college, they're not wasting their time, money, energy on something that doesn't really excite them. So food for thought there. Invest into things that are going to help you build a strong foundation. And that's also like invest into stronger relationships too, like the people that you surround yourself with are going to be a direct correlation to the quality of life that you have, right? And I said energy is currency, like whether or not you believe this, like I found it to be true, you're going to emulate the energy of a group, right? So if you're around a group of just people who are just like chilling and hanging out and, you know, want to just like watch a movie and you know, have some beers, whatever, like you're going, your energy is going to match that, right? Versus if you're hanging out with people who have a high vibration, who are bringing positive energy, that energy is going to be reciprocated, right? Like we all have that super bubbly friend or family member who, when they show up, man, you're just like, yeah, like your energy just rises. It elevates to match that level. And I do my best to be that person, to be that person who brings the energy and facilitate that because truly, you know, there's so much like copying in this culture, in this society that we live off of today, which I mean, is it the best thing? No, but if we, us, you and me can be the people who are facilitating this energy and, you know, not like rubbing it in people's faces, but showing like, hey, you know, this is what I eat. This is what I, this is when I pray. This is when I meditate. This is when I, uh, this is how I fill my cup up from a social perspective. This is how I recharge. Like investing into building a strong foundation is going to allow you to generate 
ultimately more income because again, having that energy is going to allow you to have the stamina to read, to learn, to grow, to travel, to do all these things. Again, no direct correlation to how much you invest in yourself to like, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to increase my, my personal growth increase by 32% over, over, you know, a two year period. Like, no, you're not going to get that, but you know, internally, like I'm making progress. I'm getting 1% better every single day. James Clear, Atomic Habits, probably the best book ever written. One of the best books ever written. If you just get 1% better every day, that's 37% better over a year, right? Versus 1% worse every day. Man, you're not going, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> like my football coach used to say after practice, like you're either getting better or you're getting worse. Like there is no staying the same. So number one, first reason why I'm spending more money in my 20s is to learn so that I can earn. Number two, building a strong foundation. And number three, I want to die with zero, right? And so some of you guys might get that book reference right there. Bill Perkins, another incredible book, Die With Zero, truly one of the most influential books on my life. And Dying With Zero is this concept of, you know, we work to earn, right? We work to earn a living, which I hate that. I hate that term, by the way. I hate saying to earn a living. It's like, I want to make a life, right? Like, Life is meant to be lived. We're not just trying to scrape by and 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 make a living, right? And I say this with like the most compassion as I can because like, for example, my dad, Pops, I love you to death, um, has worked really hard as a blue collar worker, as a painter, right? And my mom is an entrepreneur. She has her own business, like just absolute grinder. Like there are t were times like, yeah, we were just trying to make a living, just trying to make ends meet. And for me, like when I was graduating, when I graduated, I was living at home. Like I didn't have enough money to move out. Like I knew that that was my time to, and, and again, I'm grateful for my mom for giving me a place to stay. Like and not, not kicking me out. But, you know, I knew that I needed to invest money back into myself there in order to get to that next level version of me so that I could eventually earn more. And again, there was just months and months and months. I lived at home for 18 months after graduating of just like reading the books, you know, taking the courses, going and traveling to these new places and just trying to find little bits and pieces and nuggets that I could apply to them, that I could apply to my life in order to grow. So we work hard to put all of this money away that we, that we earn, right? Like I would go to, dinners or hang out with friends who were telling me, you know, I opened this fund and this fund and, you know, I'm putting all this money here and I'm putting this money there and this, that, and the other. And meanwhile, I'm making like no money. I made 25, no, I made, I made like a little less than $30,000 my first year out of college. And I wasn't eating out a whole lot <laughs> because I couldn't really afford it. And I was putting, I was investing all my money back into myself and I'm still trying to put some money away because I knew ultimately that I wanted to move to Austin at some point, but it took me 18 months to get there. Back to the die with zero, right? Like we work so hard to put all this money away and save for retirement, right? The golden years, baby. No, like I, you know, the golden years are right now, people. The golden years are the years where you are scratching and clawing and grinding for every dollar you can that you're you're making mistakes you're going on dates with people that doesn't work out you're investing your money into um you know courses and projects and things like that where you might fail at or you're spending a ton of money to hire coaches and trainers to get yourself mentally physically and spiritually into uh, a place where you're ultimately going to grow from that. Uh, you're running races, you're competing in competitions. Um, you're doing all these things. And while it, there's definitely struggle from it, you're going to look back on these years. We are going to look back on all of these years and realize that these were truly the golden years. Like you hear 
everybody, right? Like when I was when I was back in college, and my you know my friends' dads would be like, "Man, enjoy this time playing football right now," because once you get into the real world, it sucks. Like live it up right now. And I was always just like, "Really? Like twenty two years old? You get out in the real world, and it's all downhill from there." Like, I just don't subscribe to that narrative. I think that these are the most exciting times in our lives. And as we continue to get older, the only reason that things go downhill is if we choose to let them, right? Like, everybody's like, man, like once you get married, you have kids, you get the mortgage, you get the car payment, you got soccer practice. Like, man, it's just downhill from there. And I was like, What? No, like I'm excited to find my life partner at some point. I'm excited to have kids. I'm excited for that journey of just, you know, commitment and completely surrendering your own selfish, you know, ambitions for a greater purpose, right? It's to to raise children that are going to be people who contribute to society and, you know, have an incredible life with Um, the person who God meant for you to be with. And man, it just, it makes me sad to think that like these things we look forward to growing up. It's like the people who are in it are always like, man, enjoy, enjoy where you're at right now. Cause I, I will go back in a heartbeat, you know, be in college, playing football, you know, getting drunk every weekend. It's like, man, no, like I'm enjoying this time right now investing into myself because I know that there's going to be a time where other people are going to be relying on me, where I'm going to have a family. I'm going to have kids. I'm going to have the houses. I'm going to have, um, all these other things. Like right now I've, I've hired a couple people on my creative team. And if I don't do the work, then, you know, I'm ultimately going to let them down too, because then they're not going to have work. So like people, people rely on you, but again, like you, learn. I've, I've just now gotten to this place of, you know, being patient and just investing into myself over the past couple of years. Whereas now I'm able to bring people on. It's like, okay, mate, that's a sign that all of this stuff that I'm doing where there's no direct correlation to, you know, earning more. It's like, okay, maybe this stuff is going to pay off. And I keep dancing around, I keep dancing around the die with zero thing. So we keep investing all of this money um, and putting it away, right, for our golden years. Where I think the golden years are right now when that money could be used to do something super exciting that you maybe are not going to be able to do somewhere down the line. Like, for example, I spent a decent amount of money going to Tanzania last year and climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Could that money have been put into stocks and funds and whatever else and, you know, vested over however many years, like you're going to get X amount of return on it? Sure. But what I learned from that trip and like having that experience with my mom and with other people, that was a once in a lifetime experience. Maybe not once in a lifetime, but like that was an experience that, you know, as I get older, you know, my mom's going to get older. She might not be able to do that. Um, you know, in 20 years, like when I'm, when I'm her age, right. When I'm 50, you know, she'll be, I don't know, 75. So she, (laughs) she probably won't be climbing Mount Kilimanjaro at 75. Actually, maybe my mom's a beast, but I'm also looking into doing more missions, more mission trips. It's not cheap, but what you learn from, traveling to third world countries and spending time in different cultures with different people, experiencing new things, the, um, the perspective that you gain that you're able to come back and apply to your life is priceless. Like you can't put a price tag on that. So imagine if you just invested all your money, all your money, like you, you didn't go out with your friends and you didn't, Um, invest back into yourself when you were in your twenties or thirties or whatever. And you're just putting all your money away for retirement. And then you get to your, you know, fifties and sixties. And there's a lot of things that you wanted to do that you were going to do once you got to your golden years. But now, you know, you weren't taking care of yourself and you get to your quote unquote golden years and you don't have the health 
or the vitality or the ambition or the drive to go out and do those things that you wanted to do, like climb a Mount Kilimanjaro or go skydiving or, um, you know, backpack across South America or go fly to that place and you know take that trip or have that experience. Like there's going to come a point where, yeah, you're, you're not able to do that. So you could have all the money in the bank, but what's, what's the value of having all that money in the bank and, and you pass away and great, that money gets passed on to somebody in your will. But like, what are the things that you gave up in order to have that money in the bank? So I want to, yes, set up myself for quote unquote retirement. Like retirement's just a weird concept to me. Um, cause it's like, I, I never want to stop doing what I'm doing. I never want to stop working. Um, I don't want to get to the end of my life and have this huge number in my bank account, but have it also a huge number of regrets of things that I wish I would have done. I almost lost my life last year. And there were a lot of things that I wanted to do that I still want to do that I wouldn't have been able to do. And it wouldn't even be a thought or like, I wouldn't be able to accomplish that if I didn't take action on it right now. So, you know, I've hired some more people on my creative team. I'm diving into some really exciting projects. I'm committed to go on another mission trip this fall to India. I'm pursuing athletic goals. I'm investing into myself um, from a health standpoint. I'm investing into myself from a spiritual standpoint. Like I'm doing all the things right now to build a strong foundation, learn and experience as many things as I can before my time runs out, right? And, you know, I don't say that in like a, a bad way or, you know, way to, to scare you guys, but like we only, we're not guaranteed anything in life. And I think that we should really, really spend time in our 20s taking more risks, taking more action, learning, building a strong foundation, doing things that scare us, get out of our comfort zones, but also do the things like, hang out with your friends, go for a run, hit the gym, you know, go swimming, go on an adventure, um, get coffee with them on a Sunday morning, like do the things that, oh man, you know, I want to save this $3. Like, is it unethical to spend, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dollars on a coffee? Sure. But it's the connection piece and the conversations that are had about life that you can learn from and apply and grow from. So the three reasons why I'm investing more money into myself, spending more money in my 20s. Number one, learning so that I can earn more, building a strong foundation, and trying to die with zero. I don't want to have this fat number in my bank account with a fat list of regrets when I'm 90 years old. It's food for thought. It's something to think about. Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts on this and what you're doing to invest in yourself in your 20s. What are you spending more money on? And what are you ultimately trying to achieve in this life? I love you guys so much. Thank you as always for tuning in. If you are watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any other platform, hit that five-star rating and review button. It helps the show grow so we can reach and impact more people. Thank you guys as always. Love you all. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.